Hello everyone and welcome back to Mastermind eLearning. In this series of video, we are going to learn about whole numbers. In the previous video, we just saw what are whole numbers and how they are different from natural numbers. We also learned about uh, representing whole numbers on a number line. So, in this video, we are going to learn about the different properties of whole numbers. So, let's get started. We begin with the properties of whole numbers. Properties of addition of whole numbers. Now, let's begin with adding two whole numbers. 3 plus 4 and the answer is 7. If you add, say, another two uh, numbers like 2 and 8, the answer is 10. Now, what do we observe here? We have added one whole number to another whole number and our sum is also a whole number, right? So, we can say that a whole number plus a whole number gives me another whole number. Now, this property of uh, addition is called as the closure property of addition. That means, when we add two whole numbers, we always get a whole number. The answer is always a whole number. We say that whole numbers are closed under addition. If A and B are two whole numbers and their sum is C, then C is also a whole number. So, I hope you got what is the closure property. The closure property states that the sum of two whole numbers is also a whole number. Now, let's see the next property of addition. That is the commutative property. In case of addition of whole numbers, the order in which we add does not change the answer. Now, let's see this using an example. Say we have a whole number 3 and we add it to another whole number 4. So, what is the answer? The answer is 7. Now, if I interchange their places, uh, that means if I put 3 in place of 4 and 4 in place of 3, like this, my answer will remain the same, right? So, 3 plus 4 is 7 and 4 plus 3 is also 7. So, we say that 3 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 3, right? So, in general, if A and B are two whole numbers, then A plus B would be same as B plus A. That means if we change the order, the sum is not going to change. So, this property of addition is known as the commutative property of addition. Okay. So, now let's move on to the next property. Associative property of addition. Now, what does this property say? In the case of addition of whole numbers, the sum does not change even if the grouping is changed. Now, what does this mean? Let's see one example. We have a three whole numbers, say 3 plus 4 plus 5. We want to add these three numbers. How do we add them? Generally, we add two numbers at a time and then we add the third number. Now, which two numbers would you add is your choice, right? Right now, I'll uh, do like this. I'll put these two in a group. Means, I'll add 4 and 5 together and then add the 3 to it. So, 4 plus 5 is 9 and add 3 to this, 9 plus 3, which is 12. Now, uh, what if I would have not added this 4 plus 5 in the first place? If I would have added it like this, like if I would have group these two together that is 3 and 4 I would have added together. So, let, that, let us add this way. 3 plus 4 is 7 and then you add 5. So, 7 plus 5 that is again 12. 
So in that means that the sum does not change even if the grouping is changed, right? So three plus four plus five or three plus four plus five both are equal. So in general, if a, b, and c are three whole numbers, then a plus bracket b plus c is equal to a plus b into brackets plus c. That means we have taken uh, the grouping in two different ways, but the sum remains the same. So this is called as the associative property. And Define the property as while adding three or more numbers, whichever way we group the numbers, whichever order we add, the final result remains the same. The next property which we are going to learn is the additive identity. Now, what is this property? Uh, if you add 7 plus 0 or you add 0 plus 7, the answer is going to be 7 itself, right? So when you add 0 to any whole number, the answer remains unchanged, right? So 0 is called the additive identity of a whole number. Why? Because it does not change the identity or the value of the numbers during addition. So in general, for any whole number, A, a plus 0 is equal to 0 plus A is equal to A. So 0 is called the additive identity of a whole number. Now, next we are going to learn about the properties of subtraction of whole numbers. Now, we just saw about the closure property of addition where we knew that uh, the sum of uh, two whole numbers is always a whole number. Now, let's see whether the sub, uh, when we subtract two whole numbers, uh, whether we get a whole number or we do not get a whole number. Let's just see. Now, let us see these two examples. The first one is like when we subtract 8 minus 3, we get 5. So, 8 is a whole number, 3 is a whole number and 5 is also a whole number. So, a whole number minus whole number is a whole number in this case. Let's see one more example. Uh, 8 minus 8 is 0. So, 8 is a whole number and the same whole number, if we subtract 8 minus 8, then we get 0 which is also a whole number. But, if you subtract 8 minus 10, that is if you subtract a whole number which is greater than 8, then what do we get? We would get minus 2, which is not a whole number. It is an integer about which we, are, we will be learning later. But 8 minus 10 is not a whole number, right? So that means, in general, if A and B are whole numbers, then A minus B will be a whole number only if A is greater than B or A is equal to B. But A is smaller than B. If A is smaller than B, the answer will not be a whole number. So, we say that whole numbers are not closed under subtraction. Okay, so this was about the closure property. Now, let's see about commutative property of subtraction. Now, consider the following examples. Uh, we take a whole number 8 and subtract 3 from it. So, what is 8 minus 3? 8 minus 3 is 5. Now, let's interchange the places of 8 and 3 like this. Now, 3 minus 8, is that also equal to 5? No, that is not equal to 5. That is actually equal to minus 5. So, the answer doesn't remain the same. In short, we can say that 8 minus 3 is not equal to 3 minus 8. So, in general, if A and B are two whole numbers, then A minus B is not equal to B minus A. The commutative property is not true for subtraction of whole numbers. Now, uh, we came to know that 
uh, the closure property is not true for subtraction the commutative property is not true for subtraction now let us check if the associative property is true or not now uh, consider the following example where we have three numbers three whole numbers 12 4 and 3 and we have to subtract 12 minus 4 minus 3 now suppose if we group it like this we subtract 4 and 3 first and then we are going to subtract that difference from 12. So what is 4 minus 3? 4 minus 3 is 1. So this would be like 12 minus 1. And that would be 11. So this is the answer if we group it in this way. Now let's add, uh, let us group it in another way. Say we group 12 and 4 together and then we subtract 3. So 12 minus 4 is 8. And we get 8 minus 3. Now this if we find out it would be 5 and we see that these answers are not same right first one was 11 the second one is 5 the answers are not same so 12 minus 4 minus 3 is not equal to 12 minus 4 minus 3 right so that means in general if a b and c are three whole numbers then a minus b minus c is not equal to a minus b minus c. So we say that the associative property is also not true for subtraction of whole numbers. So this was also not true. Now let's see one more important property and that is the property of 0. Now if 0 is subtracted from any whole number, then the result is always the number itself, right? Now let's understand this with an example, say uh, 3 minus 0, that is also 3, and 20 minus 0, the difference is 20. So in general, for any whole number, a minus 0 will be a. That means if we subtract 0 from any number, the number would be the number itself. This is known as the property of 0. So, uh, we have learned the properties of addition and the properties of subtraction of whole numbers in this series of the video. Now, in the next part of the series, we are going to learn the properties of multiplication and division of whole numbers. So, uh, if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you do not miss out the next videos in the series. And keep watching Mastermind e-learning.